Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and I make videos about my sewing and crafty life and this is episode 11 of my sewing podcast. Today in this video you'll find um, lots of EPP, hand sewing, um, some cross stitch and a tiny bit of knitting and crochet. I will leave timestamps in the um, the description below so you can skip along to any part of the video that is more interesting to you. So let's start off with English paper piecing. If you follow me on Instagram you'll know that we went on a short weekend away. It was just to Wales and we stayed in a static caravan and it was really nice. I did take a small amount of hand sewing with me. I'll show you. So I made some hexagon flowers so these are half inch hexes so I'd already had a whole a whole bunch basted so I literally just sewn them together and these are just pretty much scraps and they'll be joining onto my hexy scrap quilt I've just got it there in the background just so you can get an idea of what it looks like it is sort of pinks, blues, light greens, so these will go really nicely. There was a couple. This one here I attempted thread basting and it was so bad. I think maybe because it's quite a small piece I might try again with the one inch hexagons. That might um, give me more of a feel for it but I found it really difficult to do with those so I'll stick to glue basting for the time being. So another EPP project that I've recently finished, this is a quilted coaster and this is actually for a swap that I'm in on Instagram. Um, I saw it advertised on there, basically what you had to do is make a quilted coaster, it didn't have to be hand stitched but it did have to be hand quilted and then you're assigned a swap partner and you send it along to the partner. So this is what I made. This um, motif pattern here is the Dresden Flower um, EPP design by Vintage Sewing Box. It is a free download so I'll leave the description to that in the description as well. And you can see my quilt in there on the back. So if you haven't seen this was the video before this one and I actually did a giveaway in this video. The giveaway is still open so again I'll leave the link to this video in the description as well because I am giving away a £30 gift voucher to an independent craft retailer of your choice. So the other hand sewn project that I've been working on is my quilt as you go project. So I'll just get that. So this is my quilt as you go rectangles, which is with um, lovely Tilda fabrics. I need to sew these two panels together. I am quite a slow crafter, so I haven't got very far. <laughs> You've probably got further than me if you started this. So those two need to be sewn together like so. They've been folded up, so that's why. I don't think they look creased in real life, but the camera's picking up some creases. I don't think I'm going to bother too much about making sure all the fabrics are the right side up, because some of them do have a direction, mainly this one and the one with the farm animals but I don't think I'm going to worry too much because otherwise I'll always want to have the quilt the right way up so I want to make it non-directional. So these are quilt as you go rectangles and it's made with a template that I've purchased from Daisy and Grace. I have a full video on this on my channel it's like a tutorial and it shows you where you can purchase the templates from but I've actually you can see it better on this one I've started thread based in them instead of using pins and it is a lot easier um, you know your fabric doesn't get caught your, your thread doesn't get caught on the pins so you can see I've left quite long tails and that's mainly just so I can actually reuse the um, the basting threads so I've got a whole bunch to do a lot more pinks <laughs> Somebody left me a comment saying that they actually iron the um, 
the top fabric to the wadding and even though it's not any type of iron on adhesive it helps it stick and it doesn't cause like a little bit of a bump or anything and I found that that has actually really helped and it helps them just lie so nice and flat so these all need to be sewn they're only just basted here so they all need sewing and I have also been adding a row of um, quilting you can't see it here because it's right in the ditch but I've been adding it all the way along and I did get a few comments about um, why I didn't choose to use mitered corners and it's because I wanted to go for this brick effect and I think that that looks really nice and neat you can't see any of the messy corners like you can here I think that looks really good so when it's all sewn together you can't actually see any of the folds on the corner so it adds to the brick look I think compared to the mitered corner so there was method <laughs> So I've really been enjoying working on that. I try and do one rectangle a day if I can and then join them whenever possible. Um, but some of the projects have been taking priority as is always the case with me. But I'm really motivated to work on this and I know a lot of you are also joining in. Now again, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I made a naughty purchase. <laughs> well. It was cost saving. Look at the size of this box. It didn't come in the box. I've put them in the box. But basically from Alice Caroline, I bought, and these strips are quite long. These strips, they're about one and a half inch wide and they're all Liberty, Tana Lawn, a good mixture. So don't get me wrong, some of them are really thin. Like, look, they're all stacked together there. And it's all different, beautiful colours. It's obviously the offcuts from something, but some of them, those two are quite thick. I love that yellow one and the gold one. Uh, let me find you a thin one so you can see that they're not all super. This bunch here, they're all fairly thin. But it's a lucky dip of what you get. This is three bags and I think they were £19 or was they 15 no, they were £15. I think that was reduced from 19 Or was that reduced from 13 I can't remember. I do remember that they were £15 because I've spent £45 on this huge box of Liberty Scraps. I've just put them in this box because I'm going to pull from them. And let me show you what I've started. This is actually a hand piece rather than EPP. Don't look at the back. Don't look at the seams. Um, so it's hand pieced, I think they're called uh, sawtooth stars. But here I've added uh, half square triangles in the corner just to use up more of the strips. Here's one that I'm already in progress with. So I start with doing this central motif and then I essentially do, if you can see there, that's a flying geese block. So you do flying geese all around the four edges then. A few, again, I've shared this on my Instagram. I share a lot of my works in progress as I'm going along on my Instagram. Um, so do follow me there. I'll leave the link in the description. But a few people have mentioned saying, is that just English paper piecing without the papers? It's not quite because you do it with a running stitch rather than a whip stitch. Um, but if you would like a video tutorial on how I do this type of stitching, just let me know. It doesn't involve any papers and there's no basting. Um, yeah. So what I have been doing is I've just been cutting them out with a strip. And in a little fruit punnet, I've just been grouping them up. So those are all the colours and the neutral background. So if you can see, they've got a quarter inch seam marked in pencil and you actually sew on that line with a running stitch. But if you would like a, um, a full video tutorial, let me know and I'm more than happy to do that because I search for ages thinking, how do you do this? <laughs> it's quite simple and it's very rhythmic and enjoyable. So these are all the ones that I've 
cut up and basted. Luckily, one strip does the whole star because they are quite long strips. And they are a real mixed bag of Liberty. I've never seen that print before. They're not all the florals. And then I've got a bunch of, you can't see anything. <laughs> I've got a bunch of just the coloured ones um, cut up. I really like that gold one. And um, the reason why I haven't got the neutrals with those is because I want to use different low volumes. So this one that I've used has like a honeycomb effect on it I didn't have a lot of that I've only got a meter so if I want to make this into a quilt which is always my ambitions <laughs> if I want to make it into a quilt I haven't got enough sorry I think the lighting has <laughs> just changed there I paused the video for a moment and the lighting's changed so yes this is the one that I've got with all of the honeycombs on and I wanted it to be sort of a scrappy background as well in like some nice low volumes but I didn't have a lot I looked through my stash I've done a few there in the ones that I've basted up and I don't have a lot so my local quilt shop very sadly is closing down so I went and bought some of her low volumes I'm actually going back to that shop today and also next Saturday because she's having a closing down party she's asked you know I used to go there all the time and it was so nice to walk into a shop and be able to get what you wanted um, and be able to see and feel the fabrics and I know that a lot of people don't have that and no I don't either so I'll be going there she's put out a plea asking people to help her obviously clear the stock so I'm going to step up it is my duty <laughs> So let me show you some of the low volumes that I purchased. I just bought a quarter of a metre or a fat quarter if she had the fat quarters pre-cut. So this has got lovely clouds on. This one's just like a linen effect. That one's a little bit too yellowy. But um, yeah, it's too yellow to go with this. But it will be good for other things. This one's got a low volume of blue on. I like that. Still, ye still yellow, sorry my dog's messing about, still yellow but I think it'll be okay. This one is like a wood grain, another linen, like a polka dot but the dashes in the polka dots, another linen, linen lock, it's not linen. And then this, this was actually a remnant. It's actually a little bit more grey on the in real life. So yeah, all of those uh, will be going into this project and some more projects. So what I intend to do is do a star block and then a plain square, star block and a plain square. And it'll be in a sort of checkerboard. The reason why I've decided to do that is because with there being so many small pieces, it will take ages. But also there'll be so many seams on the back and it'll be hard to hand quilt. So I think if I do a plain square, that's where I'll be able to do the hand quilting. And these are only about four inches wide, so I can do a little bit of hand quilting in the middle. So the other bit of hand stitching that I've been doing is actually cross stitch. I've done two. I haven't done any cross stitch in about 10 years. And I decided, you might have saw in a recent video, that I actually picked up a mouse cross stitch pattern. It's like a vintage one in a charity shop and I stitched it out for my sister and I made it into a lavender pillow. <laughs> I'll put a video over the top so you can see. I wasn't happy with the coverage on the mouse. A lot of people said in the comments that maybe three strands of embroidery thread would have been better on the 14 count Ada, but I was too eager to start. <laughs> um, but I was very happy with how it turned out and she was really happy with um, the pillow as well. And then secondly, I have done this really cute little cross stitch. And this is a pattern by Erica Arnott. I think these are called the Vintage Truck of the Months. And there's one for each month. And I've just got it on this um, little board that I actually bought from Hobbycraft. I think it was only about £4. I bought it a while ago and I bought the cross stitch pattern. And I kitted it up and I started it about 13 months ago. 
and I've finished it this month. I think I finished it on about the 15th. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. I don't think I'm going to do one for October. I think I would have needed to have started it already. Um, but I'm definitely going to do November and December's one. So we'll move on to the machine sewing now. Um, I've only got a few things on the go. And the first one being is this thread tidy. So what this is, it's a little bucket that you put on your sewing table. It's got a rigid rim. And actually in this rim, do you know sometimes when um, maybe in more of a commercial setting, you get a cardboard box and it's got that plastic strapping around it. That's actually what is inside here. I saved that from a box that came and put it in there. So that's why that stands open. This is with some Liberty for Eights that I bought recently. And then on the top, this is a pin cushion with walnut shells in it. And I've added a little bit of EPP with hexiform. And let me show you, if that's your table, it will just sit on your table and you can shove all your rubbish in there. It's really cool, isn't it? Now, the pattern for that was a kit that my sister purchased from the Festival of Quilts and we just made the pattern together. Um, but they don't sell it online. It was from the Bramble Patch. But if you search on Etsy, thread tidy with pincushion or something like that, thread catcher, then there's loads on there that you can do. But my tip would be to put that plastic or something firm in the rim to hold it open. So it's quite good. I have also started a scrappy project on the machine, again using strips, I love strips, these strips that I've got again from the Festival of Quilts over the last couple of years. There's a couple of different packs of um, strips that I've got, I've got some, a pack of blue tula pink, a pack of pinks tula pink and these like spotty, kind of like batiks. Thing. and I've been making a project that was both inspired by Kate at the last holy house and a TikTok video that I saw on a project using scrap scrap tape I think it's called a product that's available in America and in Kate's video on as her base she used machine adding tape, which is two inches or two and a half inches. But I can't get any of that that isn't in a quantity of like 20 rolls and I don't need 20 rolls. So I'll show you a one that's more full. What I've actually been doing, and you might have saw this in my recent video, is using the paper that I'm using is from my label printer from my business this is the back of the labels this would go in the bin it holds the adhesive on um, so I thought you know what it's a scrap product it's a scrappy quilt let me use it so what I'm going to do is they're all a quarter of an inch longer than the tape so I'll trim them leaving a quarter inch either side of the paper and then I'll sew them together alternating with a strip of these strips a four inch plain but I'm going to do it like low volume confetti speckle type of fabric I'm going to go and get that from my fabric store today um, it'll be a plain strip and then another one of these and it'll alternate the whole way up the quilt and there is one There is one where I took out the paper to check that it comes out and they come out perfectly. There it is. So I just checked that I could rip it out and they rip out fine. So if you have any waste paper product, um, it can even just be newspaper and you can cut it yourself into any type of strips that is suitable for you. Because these strips of Tula Pink that I got, they're about four and a half, five inches. And I was thinking, well, if I'm doing that onto um, machine adding paper that's like two, two and a half, there's going to be some waste on either side. I was thinking that there's going to be some waste either side. So this worked out perfect with it being four inch. I don't have to trim much off. I'm not wasting much. So I'm impressed with that. 
and it's just one of those projects that you can just sort of pick up add some more when you want to and it's mindless sewing which I really like so that is the end of the hand sewing and machine sewing section we'll move on to knitting and crochet so I'm knitting my second pair of socks I, I just don't believe it I can't believe I'm knitting socks I'm so proud now the wool that I've used here I've messed up with this wool this is uh, Reggie Perfect Pair or pa pe pe Perfect Pair as in perfect. Yeah, I think that was clear. I didn't need to clarify that, did I? <laughs> but basically with this wool, the cuff, the heel and the toe is in the ball. It's so clever. It's in the ball and you just sew, you just knit until you get to the heel and then you stop for the toe and you'll already be on blue by the time you get to the toe which I just think is so clever but you're supposed to pull from the middle of the ball to start with the cuff but I pulled from the outside and I started with the toe it should still be fine with the heel but the cuff was very long because they obviously accommodate for longer toes on bigger foot sizes and I got so fed up there was no end in sight with the ribbon that I just cut it and I start uh, I cut it and pulled it off until I got to the pattern <laughs> uh, but it worked out fine and I'm really happy with how they're turning out and I'm knitting them on um, 2.5 Addy Sock Wonders I think they are something like that a nine inch circular nine inch. I'm not down with the sock knitting terms yet am I I've watched enough videos that I should know um, but yeah but at the moment all projects have come to a halt because I started a crochet baby blanket and I started this in the summer <laughs> and I thought I had loads of time the baby's due what I thought was November so in my mind I thought okay I'll get it to them um, the beginning of November I don't know why I thought the baby was coming at the end of November but that was my own silly mistake um, the baby is due at the start of November um, but because mum's had big babies in the past um, or one big baby they're actually going to induce her at the end of October so she can deliver naturally so I need to pull my finger out I have made quite good headway but look at those ends I need to do something about those I told myself I'd do them as I went but I just didn't so it's a simple block stitch so it's a row of three clusters and then you just do a single crochet with a chain in the middle um, alternating rows you carry the white thread up at the side so you don't have any white ends it's just two ends per two rows one on either side um, but you could just do it with one other colour and carry the other colour up as well because I'm going to put a border on here because you've just got the the chains <laughs> at the side so I'm going to put a border on um, yeah so I'm really enjoying that I think I've probably got it's not very wide so consequently it might not need to be as tall it's just sort of like a pram blanket I thought Am I a third of the way? I think I'm a third of the way. I'll tell myself I'm a third of the way and I'll feel better then. So the yarn that I'm using for the colours is Sardar Stories. You can see it's just a mess. And this is 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. And it is really nice and squishy. And then for the cream, I'm using Sardar Snuggly, and this is 55 nylon, 45 acrylic. But that's really nice as well. So, yeah, these were very kindly given to me by my sister who took up crochet and she decided it wasn't for her. So, I received this lovely basket. <laughs> I received this lovely basket of um, some yarn, and I decided in the summer. Well, I've got plenty of time to make this baby blanket and now I've had to down tools on everything to get this done. <laughs> so there might not be a podcast for a couple of weeks 
There would certainly still be videos because I'll do some tutorials if people want those. Um, but there might not be, this is what I've been making because this will all be that I've been making. Yeah. So I don't think I've got any purchases other than what I've already shown, the low volume fabric. Um, so no purchases, but there will be purchases over the next couple of weeks with the quilt shop. I'm so gutted about that. It isn't so much that... Um, she's closing due to lack of business she's closing because of circumstances so i do feel a little bit better about that she's not closing through financial hardship she's closing because she's um found a job basically that pays better and she's able to support a family better with that so you can't begrudge that can you but um yes i need to find a new local quilt shop So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to enter into my giveaway on the video that's linked in the description below. And I will speak to you very soon. Bye.